welcome back, folks, to another exciting episode of Robbie and I sitting around talking about Musk. <laughs> we can't do it, so we might as well talk talk about it. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today, we're, uh, well, last one we were talking about uh, spring muskies. And uh, we're going to talk about some more exciting thing. have some video uh, clips rolled over it. But uh, summertime muskies from last year, 2021 season. We'll add some things from uh, seasons past, but uh, we'll definitely mostly focus on what we saw last year. And, uh, yeah, it was a good summer. It was a good summer. Some cool bites, good topwater bites. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yep. Some very extreme bite yeah. windows, major action. Uh, the implementation of side imaging had definitely uh, come into full effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, game. just some pretty cool stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, we, I don't know, we didn't have tons of fronts, um, but I guess probably the one common denominator of the summertime muskies in general uh, was wind, right, Robbie? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you had a good windy day. That's when I was out fishing because we had a ton of 80 degree flat calm days. It got really hot up here in Northwoods. We had to quit fishing, I think, a, at least a good week up here for the most part. Got pretty dang hot. No, um, at least in our region of uh, northern Wisconsin, we could not get any rain. But then you would look by Eagle River, Three Lakes chain, and they're getting hit all the time. And it, it's just so frustrating that over there they were getting rain and we just cannot get any cool off. Yeah. So. That, that was interesting this year, just, I mean, hour and a half away, same basically line, but that Lake Superior effect or something was pushing it up, pushing it away, so I don't know. But uh, You know, interestingly, yeah. I, can, I can remember some of the best summers of muskie fishing I've ever had is when those water temps get really warm, yet you keep having uh, rain every, you know, two, three, four days at least, and uh, it seems like, you know, once that water temp gets you know, really close, like that 75, that, you know, heat of the summer. Uh, if you can just keep a rain coming just to keep it below that, you know, too hot point, it seems like that's when the muskies are just so insane. And, right. uh, and the only problem is when it's that warm, when you hook them, they don't stop. They just keep fighting. And right. it's it's hard to actually land them. You know, it's pretty crazy sometimes. Yeah. Suicidal muskies. <laughs> Miss it's, it's the most fun, though. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, that's yeah, top water strikes and all that. Um, but uh, trying to remember, um, July was uh, not real great at the start of it. Uh, I think we got like literally the first forty inch fish probably. On a, it was a top water. It's finally, I think it got super hot. It was flat calm. You were actually fishing dogfish back in Madison. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, it was during that period of time, and we finally uh, <clears throat> landed like a nice forty inch here on a top water. And that's from that point on, it was kind of kind of going in the right direction. But I guess before that, oh, uh, you had a really good day in Madison. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that was was it a three it like, fish day? Yeah, third week I, of June. I boated three, but had you know a bunch of other action and some really close calls. Yeah, that was I want to say second week of June, possibly. Yeah. Um, um, and actually, it just seems like. Every, Every day, each and every day, there's like one bait that just seems to be rolling on that, you know, a given day. And that's like we talked about before, is that it's, you know, really important to keep filing through your bait box and seeing what the action is on a given day. And uh, that day was the mini boiler had the most action uh, for sure. You're able to run that bait over, uh, you know, the weed growth that was pretty much at a summer peak. Um, it peaks pretty early here in Madison. Um, so you you know, need to be able to run baits over those weeds and that obviously with the wood body on there allows you to do that. Um, for one of the, I remember one of the fish, it was the smaller one towards the end of the bite window. Um, but I had a fish waking in on the bait, fishing this right under the surface. But one trigger that I can offer you guys uh, for any bucktail fishing, when you see a fish chasing like that, is to just keep that bait coming and just give it a, a quick pop or snap and interrupt that blade just for a millisecond. And that's when I was able to uh, hook that last smaller fish on that day. Um, but that's just a technique that, you know, 
you know, especially summertime, that's a great technique to trigger yeah. a following fish. So, um, yeah, so that was a fun solo mission. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that, that worked. But uh, going back to that first good day in July, um, it was right before a big front. Um, it was really interesting because we, we did have unsafe water temps on the bigger lakes, but we just had rain come through, and we were fishing, you know, less than 300-acre lake. And that water temps were down, like, to 72, 73 on that particular lake. It was just, I don't know, it was able, maybe it was just more rain in that area. I don't know. But we finally had perfect water temps. We were worried when we got to it because being a small body of water, and um, it was it was cold. Yeah, it was must have been just able to cool down real quick. But, uh, yeah, it was big wind. That's the advantage, right. small water like that. Right, it, right. it changes quickly. I never thought, you know, thought that before. So that was, that was a cool thing to learn that, um you know, pay attention to those big rains and those smaller bodies of water will definitely uh, cool down a lot faster. But uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm, I only think, yeah, we caught like one small one right off the bat um, on bucktails. And then, uh, yeah, that chopper fish, that was just such a beefy, perfect musky. It was a low 40 incher. And uh, we were just fishing on the edge of the, these lily pads that we so often do up north. And just smashed that chopper. It was just heck of a fight. And that's kind was that of like, the regular chopper? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that was yeah. finally that got the ball rolling. Um, I think we had a few other wakes and stuff there, but uh, that was an awesome fish. But yeah, right before a storm, we were we were depending like, oh, should we go on uh, the big big fish water or just go to a musky pond and get a fish in the boat? And we ended up just getting a, a decent fish in the boat, and uh, that definitely kind of gave us some confidence for the beginning of July. And uh, the ball got rolling then, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that was an amazing run you guys had uh, in, in the summer, for sure. But that I was really... able to even get in oh, on yeah. it, but we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that later. Yeah, no no doubt. Um, but, yeah, kind of – yeah, July was relatively slow. But that first, it was the end of July, first week of August. Like most years, that's how it kind of rolls. That's when yeah. you finally see the big fish are coming back, shallow. They're out roaming open water, I'm sure, most of July. I don't know. But, uh, well, I will say there were so quite a few big fish caught in July, just not not by our <laughs> boats. But, sure. Uh, either way, just for for us, it was, it was August that really kind of kick-started. Um, you know, one point to interrupt you, Robbie, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it was cool. um, Go. <laughs> one of the interesting things about last July is like the watercolor that you oh, uh, sure. happen yeah. to have. Uh, you know, it stayed clear through most of the most of the month of July. So yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was had to have been lack of lack of rain. That, that's the only thing I can think of because of yeah. all of our bodies water were super clear it was crazy like you know lakes that are usually a couple feet you're seeing six seven feet down it's it's very bizarre very bizarre but uh you can see fish but to get them to yeah, bite yeah that's you another know. story uh night fishing wise july can't think of any i know mike got a few but uh me personally i don't think we got any nothing notable anyways um but, yeah, the big crucial thing that we kind of got on, kind of had that last year as well, or two years ago, is fishing the days with big wind. You just had to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember uh, <laughs> uh, in the summertime when I got in on that good bite with you guys, um, I remember looking at the forecast that it was going to be uh, two days, south, one southwest yep. at fifteen twenty, yep. and then the next day I think was northwest ten to twenty right. type stuff. Right. And Robbie, you were like, I... you were like, dude, you got to get up here. It's gonna be good. They're gonna be biting. Right. And sure enough, uh, there was a great bite that that yeah. first day. Yeah. So, yeah, wind. I could can have all the flat calm days you want. <laughs> just uh, just doesn't. I don't know. Doesn't work out good in most cases, but oh, I forgot about uh, your big flowage fish. Please. Oh yeah, that was a cool. Yeah. That was a fun little trip that we made. On kind when of when was whim. that? Uh, that was uh, early July. Yeah. Er, early, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. it was that soon. Okay. Yeah, or mid. Yeah, no. 
That was a beautiful 45 inch class fish on the slow no wakes, uh, regular flap tail metal series. Um, yeah, that metal series definitely yeah. rocked some fish yeah. last year. That, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's any different, but uh, the bait's just got a washer on the back. It makes a lot more metal noise or whatever. This is bigger HD size. But yeah, that 45-incher was uh, on the flowage that uh, it was a, a huge weather system was moving in. Huge, like bad, like lightning and all kinds of bad stuff. Wind, major wind. And uh, we were just on the front side. Obviously, that barometer was falling. And it was right before the rain kicked up. And it just, that fish was actually on a waypoint that I had seen. Actually, the biggest muskie I've ever seen on inland waters in Wisconsin. Uh, that fish came up. I was just talking about it, I think, when it yeah. ate. Oh, yeah. And that was a, a perfect specimen. Yeah. That was an amazing fish to catch. Really got me pumped for the right. summer musky bite. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, was, yeah, we don't want to miss that one. The only uh, frustrating part about that day, it was absolute perfect weather. It was almost too, it was flat, calm, cloudy, calm. warm. Yep. And maybe that was it. That's why they weren't biting right, right off the bat. Cause, it was uh, so flat. It was, it was really stagnant. flat. Yeah. But we had that little ripple start coming on that water, right? When that storm yes. was coming in. Holy cow. That was a Text cool fish. Book. That was a really cool fish. Yeah, that, was, that flowage fishing was fun to do this year. Did more of it this year than I did in years past. Um, sure. Getting on the Chippewa flowage for the first time. That's right. Kind of. For sure. Kind of was a disappointment this year, but we got a few fish off of it. Um, yeah. I was actually out with uh, Pete Rich a few times out on... I mean, he knows that body of water like the back of his hand and tried to film a show with him out there. But for whatever reason, those Chippewa flowage muskies, when they're off, it seems like that they are they are just totally off. But it was a low water year. So I guess that's never a great thing for out there. So Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. know. Uh, I know in past in my flowage experience, I always really liked the, the low water, right. like at Turtle Flambeau and rainbow and some of those places i always liked low water but uh yeah i mean it was stagnant up yeah, your way just hot for sure not much i don't know weird it was just weird i just i just remember being so frustrated every day looking at the radar and watching all these storms just pass us and oh yeah eagle river is getting more rain again yeah <laughs> dang it but um they yeah, had a flap tail Kicked out some awesome fish this year. No doubt about that. Yeah. Metal series. I mean, I got that awesome 46 incher up here by myself. That was a cool fish. That was a big, beefy fish. Holy cow. Fished all day. And I don't, yeah, I didn't, I don't think I got a single bite all day. I was out 12 hours or so. And finally, sunset was there and got that beautiful animal. That was a weird looking musky. It was like scraggly, but. Oh, tall. yeah, I yeah. remember that. Really heavy fish, yeah. Folks, if you only have limited time to fish, go at sunset. Yeah. That's If you can do it, go at sunset. Uh, yeah. There's definitely times when the morning bite can be a thing as well. Um, you definitely can't ignore it. But, uh, yeah, sunset is definitely right. amazing. Magic. And I don't like waking up early, so sunset's always good. I don't either. I'd, I'd rather fish at night than real early in the morning, but... For sure. I don't know. Uh, definitely some big fish were caught early in the morning this year. So, so as Robbie's looking back on our videos from this past season here, just a quick little note. I just got some new hats in stock. I got some beanies with this super nice um, PVC patch on there. It's kind of cool. I got some new hoodies, black char, what the back looks like, like so. Got those. And, uh, I've got some couple of new baits coming out as well, so stay tuned for that stuff. Uh, Robbie, what do you got for uh, August? I miss August. We had a good August. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, holy cow. Um, one of the coolest days that we had was, um, I mean, it's not, yeah, well, it could have been a really cool day, I guess. We did get a few muskies in the boat. But when Heidi finally was able to... Uh, get out fishing with us. She was busy, you know, at the resort uh, most of the days a week, seven days a week. And finally, she was able to sneak out uh, for a half day. Um, that, 
uh, Mike and uh, Nicole and I out there, and we were, uh, yeah, Heidi hops in the boat. It was sunny. Um, it was kind of right after, it was a little post-frontal. You know, you don't feel them as much down in Madison, I would say, than up north. You get those cold mornings finally happening, and it just, sure. there's, it's a little brisk, but it's still, you know, mid-70s out, so definitely a post-frontal day. And we had four baits chucking, and Mike's like, yeah, just throw the XL. Why not? And first 10 minutes, Heidi's in the boat. Just a beautiful 44-inch or super fat. And, you know, not top water conditions at all. We're talking 2 o'clock in the afternoon, nice and sunny. I mean, a few wispy clouds going through, but I don't know. It's just right when you get those, it feels like those 40-degree, 40 45-degree nights in, in August. That's when those big fish get up a little shallow and, they just become dumb. I don't know. They just maybe haven't seen baits in a while or something. But, yeah, that was an awesome fish. I think we got another mid-30s. And then later that evening, I lost. We had that super cool strike at both sides on a flat tail. And I was barely paying attention. That whole mouth just came out of nowhere and just grabbed it. So, yeah. that And that was, that was actually one of those weather days where it uh, wasn't totally windy and it was not ideal but they were biting and that's probably because of those cool nights i don't know you probably saw that in the lax back in the day or even madison in august oh, yeah. when it gets cold yeah everywhere, everywhere. it's seasonal yeah. change where you just those fish know that that water temp on the surface has changed they come up they feel that and and obviously when water gets cooler it gets heavier so it'll actually you know not turn over but you'll kind of get you know, that cool water will kind of sink down, I think, sometimes, at least in the shallows and whatnot. They, especially shallows, you'll get like a shallow right. bite uh, when you get those cold nights like that. Those fish will kind of pull in tight and sometimes like inside weed edge type situations or, or sh you know, well into the weed, shallow stuff uh, uh, seems to be a thing. I was actually watching um, some sucker fishermen, or not sucker fishermen, but... Some guy probably walleye fishing right next to the weed line during that time of year. And he was pulling up red horse suckers. I'm like, oh, this must be a good spot. No wonder they're sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean, suckers that shallow next to the weed. That, that, that was cool to see. But, um, yeah, I think a few days later, because that's when you were up, and uh, you lost that real nice one on the um, uh, Boilermaker 12. Oh, yeah. That was a heartbreaker. Yep. That was a big fish. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, those weeds were so crazy high um, on that spot uh, to where, you, like, it was hard to even run a boilermaker through that right. spot. You're just ripping through re weeds, ripping through, and, and the fish actually ate after I ripped a weed and the bait was kind of sideways or something. Or no, the I blade think. was on the leader. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, from ripping weeds. Yeah, it yeah. kept. The blade kept stopping on the weeds, right. and you have to keep ripping it. And, and uh, yeah, that was, was kind of a bummer. Oh, gosh, that was, that was a nice fish. Um. Yeah, like, it seemed like middle of the day when things just kind of stunk and you weren't having action. Like, if you rolled a big blade, like this is a 12-blade th through there, it seemed like something would would happen. You know, there was a, some sort of reaction. It wasn't like a bunch of action, but you seemed like we got a bite each time we did that. Yeah, um, that's for sure when we got onto the, uh, oh, only throwing Husky Medusas and Monster Medusas for a while <laughs> program as well, uh, middle of August, Willie and I had, what a great day, gosh, we pro I think we had probably eight bites total, um, we only landed a few on rubber, I think we got three on rubber, and then... Top water, flat tail Chop fish? Chopper, I think. Chopper, yeah. Chris got one, or you, I can't remember. Chopper and a flap tail, I know. I mean, we, that was, that was a stellar day. But it was a big wind day, and about 7.30, that wind calmed down, and it was like, you know, the perfect hot August top water time, too. And we were able to sneak out a couple um, top water fish as well. Um, I'm pretty sure... It was a flat tail. It was it was like any other. If you had good weather, one of those baits were getting smoked at at sunset. I mean, granted, it was awesome. We were moving a ton of fish um, while we were throwing the big rubber, 
but we weren't really seeing them. That I mean, that was so crazy. Uh, that side imaging. I mean, we could go out fishing. You'd have ten follows, but you wouldn't see them. But just knowing where those fish were going to be at, you know, sunset, a moonrise, a moonset, was so flipping helpful. So you might not get them on big rubber every day, but it seems like you'll at least move one or two fish that, you know, you you can locate them. Locate and- them. Yeah. Go back to those fish, obviously, at prime time or a weather change or whatever. Um, yeah, that big rubber. I mean, when I was fishing with you, Robbie, yeah. uh, behind you there, or, or actually, sorry, in the front of the boat, you're fishing the back of the boat. I'm throwing, I'm like rifling through the tackle box, trying right. to find another bait that they would react to. Meanwhile, you're in the back throwing rubber, yeah. and you're like, yep, here's here's another one coming in on my monster medusa or my husky medusa yeah. here's another one and i'm just like what am i doing here yeah. you know yeah. but <laughs> they moved on that bait you know and and obviously they ate it too but uh it's really interesting how that big rubber will move so those fish couldn't see them i mean they're right five side imaging <laughs> yeah middle of the day you couldn't even see these muskies and i mean that's what's so cool about that technology for night fishing you know you don't have yeah. to you know when you have a fish there at night it's just so crazy i mean oh it's cheating it really is cheating (laughs) you know interesting another bait that has been able to move some really big fish for us not so much last year but the the tna uh uh angry dragon no doubt i mean that dude we have seen so many big fish on this thing and you caught a big one on it oh, at yeah, 51 yeah. Yep. Uh, up in minnesota yep um th- this bay has a lot of power to locate fish if you're just having a point in the day where it just sucks and nothing's like happening flat calm it seems like too it seems like the yeah. worst conditions that things are. always move something um like two of the bigger muskies i think you've ever seen no, robbie yeah, absolutely come in on this thing and one of them almost ate it the one in madison oh yeah that thing um, was, that was one of the I don't know. We won't see one that big in Madison in a big. long time. Really big. Yeah, that was that was a crazy big one. Probably fifty two. Yeah, I, I would. Say. I wonder if it was a leech or something, but it is big. Yeah, it was dark though. Kind of looked like a scotty, but I don't know. Yeah, summer. T- oh, I, you know, I guess we didn't mention it earlier, but I know the, the oh, Navin. Yeah, had a you had some really good bite windows on that thing as yeah, well, no and good action. I think missed or lost quite a few, maybe. Is that? Yeah, no, that was, m- that was that some July misses. Day. Um, yeah, that first uh, it was like a northwest cold front in July. It was like the first one of the season, and I had a, I was guiding that day, and I think we raised. Well, it was like first ten casts of the morning. He loses one on that bait, on eight inch navin. Uh, we switched to the next spot. It was like right at moon. Anyway, he's got a four footer coming in pretty hot. I mean, he's he's new to musky fishing, so um, you know, kind of rushed it away from it when it, the water was still super clear. We maybe worked worked it a little bit out farther, got it swinging side to side. Maybe that fish would have bit, but who who knows? But it was moving some really nice fish. That um, that was more later June, I would say. That's when that kind of went through. Okay. Um, Couldn't remember when that was. I know Brian too had some really yeah, good yeah, absolutely. action on it as well. Yep. And then I was, um, yeah, that was a crazy day. I think we had action from ten fish. Um, but yeah, it's just weather. It's just so important. I'll never <laughs> get over that when you have that big change, especially when you just have such stagnant hot weather. Get that cold front in, and these fish just love it up here. Start doing things again, but. Yeah, I think I caught a really, I caught a stalker and a little single 10 bucktail. Um, I did catch one on an XL chopper that day, little mid 30s or whatever. So, but yeah, yeah, that thing, that thing has provided some, some good action as well. Uh, For you guys, the chopper XL, it's a big bait that, uh, you know. I like going slow with it. That's one thing that I do a little differently. Uh, does yeah. it matter? I don't know, but I just, I just like the slower pop. Normal water chopper, you can you know, works faster. I don't know. My, in my opinion, I like working it like a slow top water. It's worked best for me. Pretty good hookups too. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, well. Yeah, Mike did have some awesome days. Love you, Mike, on here. Um, yeah. But yeah, he had some good days on that chopper. Yeah, he had a lot of action on that thing right mm-hmm. as soon as he got it right away. Yeah, the, the gold one. Good yeah. action. Which one was that? The gold. What would you call it? Yeah. Uh gold digger. Gold digger. Yeah. Black gold scale. Kind of looked like eagle chaos yeah. color yep. a little bit. Yep. Um moving on though. Got um that Medusa just really kicked butt. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> what what No other can... way to say it. Yeah. What like, literally it? three people in the boat were throwing that thing. Yeah, all day long. Like, yeah. Um, and then when the sun set, you switch to top water or you keep throwing it. Got bit uh, two times at night on that thing, so that was cool to get some uh, confidence night fishing with rubber, something I really haven't done a whole lot. Um, haven't tried it much, so times we did try it, I mean, especially with side imaging, you know, it just seems like you have more comfortable when you could see them on side imaging, um, uh, following than you know than throwing. It, I don't know. One of my not getting the follows. Yes, yeah. Right, no, right. exactly. <laughs> you you know, s- b- back in the day on Malax, um, we fished rubber quite a bit at night and had sure. just really good success on it. Caught some some really big animals, like that first hour of dark or whatever. Sure. Caught some some really big fish. My personal best by weight was caught in basically darkness I see it. Uh, on rubber at both sides. Right and I didn't know that fish was there. <laughs> so we didn't have the side of it, imaging right. and whatnot. So. Yeah. Oh, I see it. It's but, right behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one right there. Yep. So going back to the rubber thing, um, the rods we have used are the Chaos Assault Stick in the 9-foot Shock and Awe. And these happen to be the 2020 rods, which are their higher end of the Chaos rods. Uh, they retail at 350, a little pricey, but they are so light. They make this technique of fishing big baits so much easier. There's no doubt. And the other thing that has made it easier for us is the Tranks 500. Uh, not even a question. If you're seriously ripping big rubber or pulling big blades fast, you just you just have to have one of these. You you have to. Um, this is the high speed one. Uh, it does I think forty six inches per crank. Um, loaded up with a uh, hundred pound, or excuse me, uh, we got eighty pound. And that's a Power Pro sl- Super Slick we use. You see the fluorescent white line or uh, uh, chartreuse green line we use a lot. We like that bright line. We can always see what's happening. You can see a bite on your rubber when. You have a slack line bait falling. You can see that line tick. But uh, uh, interestingly, the new uh, Chaos Assault stick uh, that's out now for this season is the Moab. It is a uh, double X, I think. It's triple. Triple. Triple X. Yeah, Easier. that's right. It's a yeah. triple X uh, for ripping that big rubber like that. I'm, um, I'm curious about it. I, I don't yeah, know, Rick, we, if it's, we need one. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to be really curious if I I prefer that over the uh, shock and awe, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to load up. It's all new because I don't think there's really been a rod that's that heavy, right, before? I mean, that you've used? Right, basically. I no, mean, action-wise, no. that's meant yeah. for that, actually. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, That's coming out in a nine-foot version, right, too? Yeah, nine. Okay. I think yeah. nine and a half. This is a whole ten. Well, he foot might foot. even have a ten foot yeah. too. I'm not sure. That's that's more rod than I want to swing for pulling rubber. Yeah, it's nice if I you have know. somebody in the in the boat with you at all times. But trying to net a fish on a ten foot rod just doesn't seem real plausible. I don't know. <laughs> Nine's Definitely is hard more enough. Difficult. Yeah. But I don't uh, know. I found that the nine foot is easier for me to move, <laughs> you know, and no snap that thing and and get it going. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, hi, bird. Hi, bird chitty. tweeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. she saw me jerk and thought I was <laughs> trying to play with her. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's my parakeet. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, The as far as, like, the technique rib, rip and rubber, um, let's hear a little more about that since you were just such a machine at that right. all season. And trying, uh, it was pretty uh, crazy. You just got to do it for, like, three or four days. Um, and then it, it felt all right to be, you know, doing it throughout the season. 
got used to it. The body got used to it. But uh, biggest thing was just, I mean, we were casting in, you know, slop, I would say, almost call it. Um, just being able to uh, just get, get up on that structure and then just up rip, up rip, up rip, and then kind of mentally in your mind wondering where, you know, that, that weed edge is, um, where it goes from super thick and then, you know, um, where those weeds kind of die off, get a little where it starts getting deeper, I should say, and um, just working it up top, working it up top, working it up top, and then once you get that, get off that ledge a little bit, you can kind of, um, you know, wait a little bit. You can, but the biggest thing was just having that snap, just snapping it instead of pulling it. it. Seemed like we got a lot more bites snapping it than pulling it like you know you would in the fall or something. Um, but yeah, uh, just making a little less like. Extending your paws once you got off the break was was good too. Keeping that bait low right before we got to the boat, so it's not up high the whole time. Um, right. We didn't need to see our baits because we had we were using side image back there. So even if it was seven feet down, we knew we had a follow coming anyway. So it's kind of interesting that way. Um, but yeah, keying in on snapping it instead of pulling it, and it seemed like when you would snap it with that slack you're going to break off of weeds a lot easier, especially fishing cabbage, which is kind of nice up here. We fish a lot of cabbage. A lot easier to run baits through that than, let's say, milfoil or something like that. Um, but, yeah, that husky size, monster yeah. size, oof. it's pretty wild. Well, I know, I know that big fish that I was fortunate enough to catch in the summertime. Yep. Um, we were throwing to really thick cabbage, work, working that uh, Medusa – upright you know like you were saying like like you were still hitting weeds though. yeah that's yeah, the it thing matter. you're ripping weeds off every cast for the most part <laughs> right but, that didn't but matter. uh <laughs> yeah i mean that fish um i actually fe- felt the fish tick the bait um i don't know 30 feet out from the boat or so and miss the fish um and but i saw a boil you know and i had no idea if it was a 24 inch pike or if it was a 48 and three quarter inch musky, I right, had no clue right, at absolutely. that point. <laughs> um, got the bait to the boat, you know, and I'm in the front, so I didn't have the side side image. Didn't see anything, threw back out to that fish, and then, you know, kind of let the bait sink a little deeper, you know, because it was a short cast. And uh, when I got the bait close to the boat, I knew I was still kind of deep because I let it sink. Kind of a couple up rips where you get in that bait you know, to come up from five to seven feet down or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that fish, that uh, bait came into view and the fish was an upside down muskie and eats the thing. And it was a beast, dude. That was a monster. I I never thought Northern Wisconsin muskies that big acted like that. So it was cool to see that. (laughs) I've never seen it, (laughs) you know? Oh my gosh. Summer is amazing. That was a beautiful muskie. So big old gosh Wisconsin's can yeah. I mean remember the tail <laughs> yeah, hand yeah it was... even, I mean they're like this big when they're that big up here it's just uh, there's something cool so what about, was... with those fish oh uh, yeah go so ahead. Th- thinking back to that day what was the lowdown on that day was that that was the southwest wind day um, when it was a big blow at 10 to 20 actually, and I, yeah, I know where my batteries were pretty much gone at that point too that, that day yeah um, but yeah, it was definitely a, it was probably more of a 15 to 20 kind of deal. Um, yeah, it was windy that day. I don't think we caught it, one. Yeah, no, the I, first muskie we caught that day was when Michael hopped in the boat and got that 44 or whatever. I think I missed, I had one come off yeah. on the oh, 12 yes. boiler. Yep. But that was right off, right in the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No top water action that morning either. I was surprised no. about that. I was pretty thinking that was going to happen and um we actually raised that giant fish i think it's the same fish it could have been a sure. different fish too on that spot but it was right on the icon where we caught that four footer uh we had one up just as big i would say that's um, right earlier I that day. That. <laughs> yeah it was on the medusa that thing went around a few times actually you were able to see it before i saw it yeah um gosh that was a big one yeah that was on yeah, a lemon tail. Yeah, lemon tail. Oh, and then, yeah. then you were uh, uh, 
you were having the majority uh, of your action on the was it the eagle pattern one yep. or the black monster black, black monster i think that's what i was throwing sure. at the time um yeah but yeah i think we were moving fish on side image. remember that it was that pass at moon we like raised like six or seven on side imaging on that drift and then sure. um we're like well can't leave this spot now so we picked up right. mike got right back to that spot and he always gets yanked in the water <laughs> oh yeah that's, that's so right awesome. classic <laughs> like holy cow that the thing. window was open yeah yep so we get that one that was a cool fish and then so after we caught that yeah. one we we were out of trolling motor basically and we uh, uh we had to get back to where we you know had drifted when we caught michael's fish we had to get back to where we started, I think is what happened. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I just flipped out my Medusa 15 feet of line out, and I just start pump trolling the thing as Robbie's idling back to where we want to start up again. And we didn't pull that bait no. for 15 seconds. I'm like, I got one. And had another fish pump nice. trolling that Medusa. Oh, my god! You know, a nice 40-inch or whatever it was. But it does... Um, uh... Yeah, it does go show that uh, having that side imaging is very useful because we would have no idea that all those fish were on that spot. We didn't right. we didn't see any of the fouls, but we did see them on uh, on the locator. So they turned on, and what is a three musky window? <laughs> I mean, Just nuts. like that. <laughs> that was and then you think they would have uh, kept biting right. until after dark, but just no, no it Turned was on. over. That was it. That's when they wanted to bite. It was kind of during. Um, luckily. That wind was just kind of gradually going down. Maybe that was what what brought it. Um, I don't know. Those are some angry muskies, especially. Oof. <laughs> especially Man, that early. thing fought too. That thing was, <laughs> was really a, pissed off. I almost got her on like the first ten seconds too, but the bag wasn't out of the boat yet. Right. I wasn't gonna stab on that thing. That was. Ugh. Gosh, that was. She was fish. hooked good. Yeah. 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 She wasn't getting off. But, so uh, sh let, let's look at uh, video footage of you working that Medusa. Sure. I think it's really important to, yeah. for, to see, for people to see how you were uh, working that thing. The best one is when I was telling like how I was doing it and then <laughs> that musky bite. And then so, it happened. Yeah, and then it happened. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good day too. Just caught a 46-incher and then released it. Got casting again and, you know, another upper 30s or whatever. Uh, yeah, but the power of the Medusa Big Rubber um, up here in the Northwoods was pretty incredible. I don't know. For Michael, too. Oh, I mean, yeah. he had he was guiding a lot that time of year. Yeah. And, uh, like, just watching his Facebook story. Oh, yeah. Um, Instagram was like, holy crap, another one? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> the rubber is just getting hamburgered up there. Yeah, yep. You know, using that big rubber, and our fish aren't, you know, 55 inches, but <laughs> they loved it. I mean, it was crazy watching, yeah. you know, 30 inches t bone in a monster Medusa. Like, well, what, what oh, is, yeah. How does this happen? They don't know how big it is. They just no. eat it if it moves. That's yeah. the bottom line. You know, muskies uh, can eat a fish, I think, up to one third their own size. Sure. So they don't care. They don't care. No. No. But uh, one of the biggest things especially if you ever if you're using um snaps with your leaders when you're doing the rip and rubber thing just make sure you have extras when those snaps get shiny i mean you need to be replacing yeah. them every week we are big on that because that is just so much wear and tear on that equipment i mean <laughs> there's nothing worse on especially with snaps um yeah having one of those that would open up on a big giant bite would really suck so i know were you ever a split ring guy? I did split rings for a while when there was basically not a good snap out there. Originally, yeah. there was the Berkeley Crosslock, which were quite good at the yeah. time. And then and then they went, uh, another manufacturer was making them for them, and they got really soft. And that's when I went to all split ringing. My, uh, what he's talking about is no snaps on your leader, going with a split ring to a split ring on your bait to connect it all. Yeah. And, uh. And then the, the stay locks came out, and that definitely is a proven thing. Um, but the big thing is, like Robbie said, you, you, once they start getting shiny at the bend there, you got you to gotta replace it. Yep. So Because they yep. will break at that point. 
especially with that uh that Technique. tactic yeah i mean we're swapping them you know every four or five days really if we're on them so yeah you just don't want anything bad to happen uh we use the uh stringies uh stay lock snap yeah. that's actually uh made in canada and um that's right those yeah. ones came to be a lot more heavy duty than you know you, the ones that you would find elsewhere so i don't know it's, yeah uh, mustad made them for a short time yeah, and, they, and just, they were not good yeah so Gotta watch out for that. No one any accidents, especially doing a, yeah, you know, especially just checking your knots, checking if there's a frayed anywhere. I mean, it's it takes a lot out of your equipment <laughs> doing this. So and your body and yep. your mind <laughs> and your mind. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Oh my gosh, but yeah, um, it was a stellar summer. Biggest thing though is definitely those windy days, those windy, warm front days, or um, when those cold fronts started happening in August, love that time of year. There's nothing better than that. We finally get shallow again. It seems like the big fish are there. They're present, and they're ready to actually bite. So, yeah, fun year, though. We need to make it up to Minnesota, though, this coming year. Yeah, We're that was the first that. year Jeez. I hadn't been there in since 2004, <laughs> yeah, actually. So. so, yeah, yep. Have to get out there. Well, that's kind of a rundown on what our uh, summer was like, uh, particularly in last year. Uh, yep. The things we ran into, common denominators, like we said, was wind. Um, of Box course, evening. Yep. yep, that's always a top thing. Water, slow top water. Yep. And uh, yeah, the I'm power not... of a slow top water is yeah. uh, just undeniable. Yep, that one-two punch of big rubber during the day. Raise some fish, and then at sunset, you know exactly where to throw a flat tail or, or an XL chopper or whatever, whatever your favorite topwater bait is to get bites. And uh, that seemed like our, our one-two uh, one punch for this year. Um, it was fun. Fun little um, summer. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, what, the one thing we found about the weeds that we didn't mention before is sure. that it seemed like the areas that had – uh, more fish in them, you were like seeing bait fish on the screen also, like oh, on your sure. down image. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there was definitely food around, whether they were perch or what have you, whatever the bait fish was on that particular lake. But I know a lot of the time, especially when I caught that good one on the uh, Medusa there, there was a lot of bait fish stacked in that Close. corner of the lake. Yep. Um, and obviously, wind has a huge influence on where the food is going to be on given days. Uh, prevailing winds, it's typically on the windswept side of the lake very often. Um, but then there's the case, too, that a spot is a spot, whether you see bait or not. And there's sometimes just always big fish on it, like on uh, right. the other the other area uh, that you were doing good on rubber, sure. Robbie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just seemed like, well, there there was some red horse red, showing up or yeah, suckers yeah. the yeah, guy was catching, catching or whatever. Yeah. So that was interesting. Food. Not seen. Find the food. Find the food. Find the fish. Windblown spots, though, when you're not seeing anything on the calm side. Can never go wrong with windblown spots. So anyways, yeah. folks, um, I hope whoever went to uh, the Minnesota Muskie Expo had a good time. Um, yeah, no doubt. Comment below. What's the hot bait you picked yeah, up that you'd like to uh, looking forward to checking out? Yep. Um, and then I wanted to say too, uh, thank you so much for all your support. Uh, all the people are continuing to reach out to me and check up on me after my heart attack on January 7th. Uh, I'm doing very well. I'm feeling very good and I'm looking forward to doing some fishing here within the month. So yeah. thanks. Bye. Thanks Absolutely. for everybody. Wow. But anyways, um, yeah. That's it. Th yeah. Right. That's a wrap. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll look. Yeah. Go we'll look at trying to get some other people on here and uh, uh, see if we could do some more podcasts here coming up. That's the plan. Yep. So co comment below who you, who you would like to have on the podcast. We'll at least ask them and see if they're willing and can able to do so. But, Absolutely. Uh, there you have it. Appreciate all you guys coming by and checking this out on the summer musky action. Uh, we'll have to talk about fall on the next yeah, one. Yeah, mine as well. <laughs> guys, you can, uh, if you don't want to watch it, you can listen to it on Spotify, 
and Apple or Podbean. Uh, appreciate you guys watching, listening. Um, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.